Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. We've just gotten back to the camp after our battle at the Lost Chapel against the Nabasu, which had been set up by Monago and Staunton to get revenge on the Crusaders for Staunton for all the humiliation we, we put him through. Um, which, you know, he didn't actually seem to, <laughs> to like the results and hearing all of his old comrades in arms scream in agony and pain and suffering as they were tortured and eaten alive and turned into ghouls and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Probably not what he was imagining uh, when he was thinking about getting revenge, but, you know, he's made his bed, I suppose. Uh, we need to sleep because we're on death's door. We've been on death's door for a while because they wouldn't let me rest before the battle. Bastards. Let's go ahead and make sure we get a scroll cooking. Um, do we still want... Can you make... You can't make cure scrolls or inflict wound scrolls. That's unfortunate. Uh, I still think the haste scrolls are probably still the most important ones we can make. So keep doing that. Oh, and some people have leveled up in mythic levels to go through. So we got to do all that. There's a strange smell in the air today. It stirs the senses. The spirits tell me someone will die. How sad. Yeah, very sad. I can't wait to really dive into her story because I've never never experienced it before. I mean, I've heard I've heard tales of what what she what she is. Uh, you know, but I I don't have any details. I need the deets. And the things that you know I've heard is she's a, you know, killer, but we kind of already knew that. Um because that's how we <laughs> we ended her in our party last time we found out about that. We're like, nah, that's not okay. Uh, okay, so Socio, you get um, Holy Lance at 8th level. Mm -hmm. Can give your weapon, you touch the Holy Special Weapon quali quality for a number of rounds. Go up to half your level. Okay. Yep, boring old clerics. I do I do apologize if any of you are big fans of clerics <laughs> in uh, Pathfinder games. I just, I think it's a product of the, they don't have... Like a lot of class abilities, right? It's mostly their spells. Which are important, don't get me wrong. Nice spells. Okay, for your feet, um, we'll get Mythic Channeling for you. Since you are still more of a healer than, say, Daerun. Uh, my boy here, you need something. Um, you can get Weapon Specialization Claw or Weapon Focus Claw or Bite. Ooh, um... I think I might get claws for him. Let's see. Mythic weapon power attack could be good too. So could flawless attacks. Oh man. What does this do? The damage you deal with your chosen weapon is truly awesome to behold. Yeah, that could be good. That could be good. It could only be claw, it can't be bite. Do you have to have... I'm guessing he already has weapon specialization. I'm going to get Claw. Yeah, do it. Fuck it. All right. For you, to be honest... Ooh, Mythic Spell Penetration. Yep, that's it. I was going to get a, the next Abundant Spell Casting, but... Doesn't look like she needs that. Uh, Jalaxian Diva. Charisma up. And grab that. And then for this, for a level 2 spell, kind of want hold person. Now we're going to cure moderate wounds. Where did she already get that? Does her... She's not... She doesn't get, like... She's not an oracle, right? So she doesn't get these automatically. But she's got that. So maybe she does. I don't know. We're taking it. We're taking it anyway. She's not going to be in the party very often, so not too worried about that. Um, for you, hmm. no. I think abundant casting could be good for her. Yeah, we're going to get Abundant Casting for her. She's going to have a pretty stunted spell book anyway because of 
the multi class. I think that'll be useful for her whenever I do need to take her. Okay, we also need to take a look at the negative levels we picked up. So he's got one. That's two. Okay, so only two people have negative levels we have to worry about. And m myself. Although I don't really have negative levels, but, you know. Bugs and all. Alright, so let's go out here. And... I guess we'll talk to everybody first as we make our way to the, the medical tent. I'm going to save you. Okay, nothing new. Nothing new. So Darren's probably going to have something to say. Socio will probably have something to say. Ulbrig might. How Ulbrig looks lost as he stares at his hands, protracting and retracting his sharp claws. Everyone dead. There's no one left. No one. I just can't wrap my head around it. I told you as much, but you didn't believe me. It's not something a man will believe until he sees it for himself. I still don't believe it. I keep wondering if I'm about to wake up and find out none of it was real. Well, tears won't win us the war. How can I help, War Chief? You cannot. Well, you can. That's just a fight with me. But nothing right now. Oh, uh, Arabeth probably has something to say too. Oh, no? Okay. I figured she would, seeing as we just saved her. But I guess not. If she doesn't care about being saved, that's gratitude for you, huh? I know she thanked us before, but... Yeah. It's not looking like people are going to have a whole lot of new stuff to say, unless they had a quest get finished. Alright, let me move through here. Up here, the Camellia. Nope. Corgus? Nope. Wolgif is gone. Wolgif. Although I've been thinking. So I picked up, or I didn't pick it up, but um, I was trying out the Magic Deceiver class. The Arcanist, the new Arcanist archetype where you get to like merge spells together and stuff. That's a lot of fun. And I'm thinking maybe Wolgif would make a good one of those because he's got high intelligence or high charisma. Maybe he doesn't have high charisma. Oh, so maybe it would be... um. Ember, I was thinking maybe we would make a good one of those instead of a diva. I don't know if it really fits her much either, but yeah. I was thinking Bulgif though, because he's actually going to be in the party, which I like. <laughs> uh, the soldiers are worried. Oh, sorry. Commander, Quartermaster Garm looks mildly embarrassed. So sorry to distract you, but I could use some advice. The soldiers are worried. Everyone can feel it. The decisive battle is coming. The big one. The one we started the crusade for. Some of the lads are getting real jittery. And I was wondering if there was anything I could do to help them. Should I ask the bards to come up with a rousing song? Or maybe throw a little shindig? I rather like the idea of a rousing song. You should hold a tournament. The troops can remind themselves and their peers how strong they truly are. There is no better way to allay fears than to have a good night's sleep and a full stomach. Make sure everyone is well rested and fed before the attack. Hold a tournament. Yep. Great. And those who distinguish themselves can be rewarded with tokens of appreciation from the commander. A sturdy breastplate for some. A fine bow or a sharp dagger for others. We can use it to make a small but resilient band of the finest soldiers for the rest of the army to look up to. I like that idea. The quartermaster flashes you. His usual grin. But it fades almost immediately. What a march, eh, commander? I won't forget it. Not in a million years. I can't stop shaking when it, whenever I think about the leper's smile. It's a miracle that we lost so few back there. The soldiers realized that if you'd made the wrong decision, half of the army would, wouldn't have made it. They're scared. They're scared things are only going to get nastier from here. What if we held awake, lit up the bonfires, poured some wine, raised our cups in the memory of the fallen? It'd do the troops a world of good. We'll commemorate the fallen. Give the soldiers some wine, but not enough for them to get smashed. We will mourn the fallen not with wine, but with words of prayer. Have the recent losses not taught you anything? I want the soldiers to be ever vigilant and ready to fend off a surprise attack. Uh, number three. Oh, you're right. This isn't the time for tears. We already let our hair down once, and we almost lost Canopus. We'll be on our guard. Yes, we will. 
All right, the Canarperson asked them to send a few uh, no-nonsense clerics. Somebody to keep an eye on the troops and maintain discipline. Yep. Hey, I wasn't done with you. Take all this junk. Take it all. All right, and then as for this stuff, don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need it. Don't need it. Mm, I'll hold on to it. Don't need those. Don't need that. Don't need that. No, 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 no. Take it all. Big game gloves. When did I get that? Whenever the quarry wearer of these gloves announces a quarry, targeted enemy suffers a minus two AC penalty. It's not something I can do, right? I can get rid of one of those. We don't need two of those. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of those. Oh, is this Wolgif stuff, maybe? That's Wolgif's things, I think. Or did I get another pair of those? Or did I never get a pair of those? <laughs> I don't know. I know we just found it, um... Or I just found some of those in, uh... Kingmaker. Oops. No, I want those back. Deal. 36 grand. Nice. Okay. Let's keep talking to people. Move out. I think Sociol and Darren might have something to say. Sociol is drawing a tussle-haired young man standing hunched before him. The drawing looks much better than the reality. Sociol doesn't try to embellish anything, but on his page, the young man looks less like a sickly student and more like a hero from a romantic ballad. Turn your head to the right a bit. Yes, that's it. Oh, Commander. Hail. The young man is obviously uneasy in the presence of his superior. Sociol, who's this? Are you friends? So I need to talk to you. Who's this? His name is Aaron Keir. I'm an engineer. Begging your pardon. I I'm responsible for camp fortifications. Aaron fidgets under your gaze and ducks his head in a low bow. Are you friends? It's not that... I just needed the advice of a priest. I'm not very religious, but, you know, sometimes a person feels a little lost in life and everyone feels down sometimes. We talked, and I thought art could be could help strengthen his spirit. I look much better in the drawing than in reality, the young man smiles faintly. The revered cleric says it's, this is how Shellen sees me, that I could be like this if I wasn't such a worthless piece of... No, it's not that. The goddess sees the best in you. The people around you, don't interrupt. The people around you see how kind, brave, and reliable you are. Others are afraid to admit their sins to themselves. And you are afraid to admit you have virtues. Don't be afraid. Look at yourself through the eyes of the goddess. Through the eyes of your friends. This is why you need this sketch. Thank you, Cleric. I will try. So, see you and talk to you. Uh, of course. Aaron, let's continue this later. Saluting you, the young man leaves in a hurry. Good afternoon, Commander. How can I help? Did you think about what the Hell Knight told you? Yes. Celsio shakes his head. Another dead end. I still know nothing. How could Trevor have parted with this shield? I can't imagine. You don't know what your brother has endured in this war. Perhaps the person you once knew is gone. I'm sorry if your brother disappointed you. You must believe in your brother. If he gave away his shield... It means he had a good reason. Yeah, he could be... He could be changed, buddy. I don't want to believe that. I can't. Not Trevor. With a sudden shiver, Socio looks down and whispers faintly, Brother, will I recognize you when I find you? You know, it's not only the Hell Knights who told me the truth. Knight Terabade refused to tell me anything about my brother's fate while I was serving in Conabris. But after these events, she finally broke her silence. And the things she told me he shakes his head. That he was a good fighter, but a terrible knight, and an utterly worthless paladin. He became more and more cruel as time went on. He started caring more about destroying the enemy than protecting the innocent. He gushed over Prelate Holren and his witch hunts. Eventually, the goddess's patience wore thin. When he beat up some poor fellow for blasphemy, Shellen took away T Trevor's powers. That was a huge blow for him. He left the city, asking only that his disgrace be kept secret from his family. That was why Erebeth didn't say anything earlier. 
Eve. Brother, my brother. But how? He's always been kind, merciful. Where could this cruelty have come from? Have you gotten used to your new powers? Such power. It's like a young I'm like it's like I'm a young priest again, taking my first step in service to the goddess. When Shellen first entrusted me with the power to heal the wounded, I was so afraid to touch anyone with these hands. And I didn't wash them for a week. Until my mother told me took me by the ear and led me to the wash basin. The cleric smiles a broad, boyish smile. Of course, the powers you gave me are far stronger than those granted to a novice cleric. Stronger than most clerics ever receive. Yeah, I am. I am stronger than a god. Uh, what can I say? You know. It is not my duty to feel proud of them, but to use them in the service of others. And to ensure that what happened in Canabras, what happened to my brothers in faith, will never happen again. What do you think of your brother's fate now? I can't wrap my head around what I've learned. It's as if we're walking or talking about a different person altogether. How could he... Why did he give his shield to that she-devil in black armor? Oh, Shellen, let this all be a mistake. Thank you for talking to me. My pleasure. <laughs> oh, no, my brother. How could this be? Thanks for talking to me. My pleasure. Yeah. That tone shift. Sila. All right. I think that's... Ev Wait, where's Darren? Did I skip him? There he is. I leave. You follow. Looking around the place, the Count seems quiet and dejected. Ah, uh, Menorak. Hello there. I'm feeling uncharacteristically pensive right now. Or rather, I'm finding it rather difficult to put in my to put my thoughts into words today. I'm trying to understand something. We've been traveling together for a while now. What's your opinion of me? You're an arrogant, egotistical brat, and it doesn't seem like it's going to change anytime soon. I sincerely believe that you can change and become a better person. You don't let anyone cl you don't want to you don't let anyone get close. There might be a good reason for that, but you could always count on me if you ever need any kind of support. You're a useful tool to me. Anything besides that is no concern of mine. Hmm. I don't know. Like, I know we're evil, but we're still huma human, right? We're still mortal. We haven't, like, become full lich or full demon or anything. So, I think we should still have a bit of complexity to our character, not be super one-dimensional. And I think, I think Manorak does respect Davin. Is maybe... Maybe that's not the right word. Um, values. Darren. I guess is probably the best word. Yeah, we're going to go with you don't let anyone get close. Darren's eyes widen in shock and he looks at you with bewilderment. Then he smiles. Have you any idea how terribly insipid you sound? Throw in some extra nonsense like you can confide in me and I'll be adamant that you were raised by a couple of trite playwrights who put you to sleep by reading their boring scribblings and the workings of the heart. Fine. Do you know why I asked you that? Because the answer to the question, what do you think about me, usually reveals more about the one doing the answering than the one doing the asking. Now that I've got you thinking, let's proceed to the usual small talk. You want to talk about your past? I've been thinking a lot about what happened since our visit to Heaven's Edge. <laughs> do you want me to write a detailed report? You are the commander of the crusade, not my personal biographer. Why do you need this boring trivia? Goodbye. All right. I think we're... Oh, wait. We need to get some restoration scrolls. Uh, Oh, yeah. I forgot this guy's dead. C -c Commander. A slim young man, almost a boy, holding a shepherd's staff in his hands, looks at you with admiration and awe. He seems unsure whether to salute you or drop to his knees. Hesitantly, he simultaneously raises his hand in salute as he bends in a deep bow. Who are you? My name is Gyado, Commander. Gyado the Shepherd, from Last Wall. I'm from a humble stock, village born and bred. I used to watch over the sheep, and once when I was a boy, a, a cleric passed through our village. Old Jod was his name. Ah, we know Jod. Yeah. I don't know if I caught that my first playthrough. 
He was a kind man. He gave me an apple, looked me in the eye, and told me, You've got a pure soul, boy. And uh, I see you're going to serve a rastal, just like myself. There's no way I could be a cleric. I didn't even know the letters. But when I heard of your crusade, my heart told me to join you. So I did. I may not know how to fight, but I can still help the warriors heal their, heal their wounds and comfort their suffering souls. I ran away from home in the dead of night, taking nothing with me, and came here. Since then, a rascal has started to give me spells, just like to a real cleric. So that's how I came here, the boy sighs. At first, I was just honorable help. I, I just helped honorable Rathamus, and then, since he's gone, oh, woe is me. Okay, calm down, buddy. <laughs> what kind of help can I expect from you? After Ra honorable Rathamus was gone, I was put in charge of the scrolls here. There are so many different ones. If you need, I can read them too, but only here at camp. If you're going on an adventure, you'd better take some other cleric with you, a stronger one. Just don't think it's because I'm scared. I'm not. It's only that I just get in the way. I see you're attending the altar now. Young man casts a glance at the altar of Abadar and sighs. I know it's not exactly the done thing for a priest of Arastal to attend an altar, altar of Abadar. But what else can I do? I can't leave our soldiers without protection from the corruption from the abyss, can I? And I can't leave... Esteemed Rathamus's work unfinished. Alright. I am very sad that it, we're unlikely to see his story this time around as well, since we're going to be evil. I doubt. I doubt we're going <laughs> to be able to save him. And give me those. And you get one. Do, 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 do. There you go, and you get one, and that's it, right? Yep. Oh, we got scrolls of heal too. Nice. Okay. Let's go ahead and head out. I guess we're going to Dresden now. Onwards. Check our map here. Wait for Kalas' schemes to be revealed. Make it to Dresden. Go to the Heart of Mystery. Find something else that once belonged to Terendalev. We did find the claw, right? Wait for events to unfold. Unfold for Wolgif. Solve the riddles of the name's ruin. Okay, yeah. We don't have any quests to do besides go to Dresden. Um. Yeah. I think we're going to go with this group. So we need... Boom, boom, boom. Or is it? Yeah, that should be fine. Yeah, as much as I enjoy uh, Sela and her animal companion, and they are very useful, I do think um, Reggie fits the group more. Okay. Hold on, what's all this? 40. <gasps> oh no. There's no way they're gonna make it here. I guess we could skip a day. Oh, there's a demon army up there too we gotta deal with. Okay. Might have to skip two days. I don't think that's a big deal. Alright. Join up with me. You champions will have to go somewhere else. And then, yeah, I'll have to wait a day. Skip a day. I really want to. <laughs> I really want to give it a shot. Oh, who are you guys? What the hell? Get in my party. Let's save it. Let's do this. 
We can do it. I believe in us. We're stronger than we were last time. I think. <laughs> Alright, there are archers down here too. That we have to worry about. But kill these ones. We gotta weaken this group. Otherwise, they'll do a lot of damage to us. I don't know if that was the smart thing. Still alive. Alright, they're not gonna get to us this round. Okay. Now we hit you. Good. Okay, well, you guys kill them now. Good. You won't make it to us. You won't make it to... No, no, no. So none of them make it to us yet. So we'll wait. Uh, you can lay on hands on them. Okay. I think we want to kill the skeletal champions. Okay, good damage. Okay, you're gonna come up here, attack them. Good. Nice. That helps a lot. You're gonna come here. Oh, damn it. That's not good. Kill them. Damn. Maybe I... Uh, I really don't want another Pyrrhic victory from these guys, but... It's looking like that might be what happens. Oh, I should have hit the 250, guys. Hmm... Yeah, it's just not doing enough damage. Oh, it's 63 there. I think we lose this one, actually. Yeah, we're definitely going to reload. Let's just do it now. Let's not waste time. Can we reload? Oh, maybe we can't. Well, I guess we'll just win this one real quick. I didn't mean to move. Should be fine, though. Yeah, I mean, we're still going to win it, but it's just not, not how it was supposed to go. Yeah, we lose just about all of our soldiers. I think we could replace them, I guess, with like Hell Knights or something. I don't think it's worth it, though. We still have six strength somehow. I guess it's really just these guys we lost. Which we could replenish them. Or replace them with somebody else. But, no. I don't want to. I want my, my foot soldiers, at least for now. At least until we can really, you know, replace them with something good. And something I can replenish multiple times. Okay. Uh, we need to get back up here. You're going to have to skip another day. Where are you guys? Come up to camp. Now, I can't join you with them, right? Unless I assign a general. Do I have the m money now? I do. I kind of like that idea. I don't know if it's really worth it, but... We get General Shy in here. And I didn't know you could do this. 
I learned this after I picked the Baroness, but I think she's she's probably second best, maybe. She's definitely in the top three or four generals. Uh, yeah, go ahead and do that. Now we can combine you. And that way we have a second army. Yeah. Not a very strong army, but a second army nonetheless. Um, where am I at? Yeah. Skip a day. Jump to siege. I wonder what that means. I guess if somebody, if they're, oh, I think that's when they start acquiring these castles. Demons can get to the siege part. All right, let's move forward. The Battle of Dresden. We're getting close, guys. I was checking to see, like, how my progress here compares to my progress in the first game. And, um, we're moving along much faster this time around. Kill the, uh, Dretch. You're gonna shoot the rock. One damage. Are you gonna be able to get to us? Yeah. You too? Yeah. But we can't get to them. Block them out here. And go there. Okay. That's not terrible. Kill these guys. You're gonna shoot them. Shoot them. Or stab them. Ooh, that did nothing. Uh, attack them. Good. Attack them. Damn it. That's not good. Wow, it stunned all of us? Finish them off. Shoot them. Okay, we'll probably need the um general for that one. Go ahead and heal them. Kill the swarm. Good. Attack the cultists. Good. Uh, heal yourself. Good damage. Figured they were gonna try and that do that, but it makes no matter. It makes no matter. Okay. Good. We win. I wish their enemy leaders had names. That'd be cool. I don't know if some of them do. I know, like, the big bad last general. I think he does. But I think that's just because he's story related. The last enemy fortress blocking the commander's triumphant army's advance has fallen. The soldiers are more than happy to spend the night beneath the shelter of its fortified walls. The road to Dresden is clear. Hell yeah. Looking awesome. Alright, I guess we should probably push these guys back here too, huh? Let's go. Keep pushing. I didn't look at the general of this army. Okay, they don't have one. Good. We definitely need to kill the rock, though. Those guys are dangerous. They're all dangerous. Oh, God. Could be bad. Oh, we did really well there. Fire. Fire. All right. And we'll want to spread these guys out a bit because of the, um, that. Alright, send that to the dretch. 
Yeah, kill the dredge. We don't want any more of those stink clouds stinking us up. I think the clerics will be fine. Kill the dredge. Yeah, we still have plenty of energy, too. Should get an attack of opportunity on them. Alright. Get the Burma Rex. Alright, oh, they're fire based. Oh, I'm dumb. I'm bad at that. Oh no! Damn it. Alright, then you need to attack them. And now we'll use it on the fighters instead. Nice. Good damage. Good. Ooh, nice. Alright, I think we're probably good. Switch to auto. There we go. Victory. Push the demons back. Drive them away from Can or Dresden, not Canopus. <laughs>
victory. Good thing we haven't had like any spell flinging generals uh, on the enemy team yet. That's good. That gets us some more points per day. The forces of the Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth have been destroyed, and now there is no obstacle to sending scouts within the enemy territory. Their reports will make the supply line safe from the sudden from the sudden attacks. Nice. Can we get to them too? I think we can. Oh yeah. We are gonna wipe them all out. I think we still got energy enough to do this. I hope. And actually look. Okay, we got one fireball. I think these three are the ones we want to kill. We didn't kill them. Kill the Nabasu. The Nabasu must die. Yeah, we'll use our last energy on it. Hold. Hold. Kill. Got him. Okay, ghouls, 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 and cultists. Trying to take these ghouls out, the summoned ones. And now it's going to be all down to my generals. Or my soldiers, rather. Smite them. Finish him off here. Good. One group down. Good. Another group down. Big damage on the ghouls. Yeah, and I've got lay on hands too. So we'll be fine. We've got it. It's in the bag. Oh no, he's stunned. Oh good, he went after somebody else. Nice of him. Okay. Victory! The Baroness marches onward. Our best general. Evidently, demons had taken a liking to the place and had been using it as a sacrificial site for quite a long time. A dagger, presumably used for killing innocents, was found plunged into the center of the ritual symbol. We get the Edge of Force. Whenever the wielder of this plus two cold iron dagger casts a spell with the Force Descriptor, it does an additional two force damage per dice roll. Ooh. Nifty. All right. So we got them in there. Have you guys come up and defend the fort. Yep. All right. Back to me now. What time is it? Okay. Well, it's a little too early to end the episode, but it's also kind of late into the episode where it's like, do we want to start Dresden now or do the next episode? Oof, that's tough. I think we're going to wait until the next episode. We are going to move up to it. Oh. Well, maybe there's, like, planning. Maybe we'll do the planning. I think there's, like, a planning phase first. I hope. <laughs> I thought we had to go all the way to the uh, city itself to start the event, but not, not the fort outside of it. My bad. Your army halts along a hill, and in the distance you see the walls of Dresden. Smoke rises over the city. Winged figures are circling in the sky above it, but they don't look like birds. It's time to discuss strategy. It was once it was once an unassailable fortress. Luckily for us, the demons destroyed a lot of the defenses when they stormed the city, and in the 70 years, they haven't gotten around to mending them. But this isn't going to be easy. 
Unfortunately, most of the walls are still standing. Anevia spreads the old city map on the table. The gates are old and rotten now. We can get through them with a ram. But then there will be street fights. It will be a hell of a fight in Dresden. Luckily, somewhere in the city, there's a sacred banner. The Sword of Valor. Iomade's holy relic wouldn't fall to corruption. Like, ever. Demons just kept it as a trophy. A sign of our disgrace. And now it's going to be their downfall. If you find it and raise it again, all the demons in the city will be weakened and lose their ability to teleport. That's when we'll chop them up like blind rats. But don't forget, Staunton Vaughn, or Staunton Vane, is somewhere out there. The same traitor who gave Dresden over to the demons in the first place. He won't part with that banner easily. Nera raises a hand like a student in class. May I say something? May I? I have a plan. Regil looks at you without speaking. It seems he has a suggestion. What are the Eagle Knights, Eagle Watch Knights going to do? The same as everyone else. Die for nothing. Erebeth's eyes shine feverishly in her gaunt face. Who are you lying to? Yourself? Each other? The gods? You all realize that we're going to die. We're leading our people to the slaughter. Our army was almost defeated by a swarm of gargoyles. We won't last five minutes in Dresden. Beth, are you nuts? Yes, it's a dangerous gig. We all knew that. We all knew what we were signing up for. But now that we've got here, you want to, you want us to shit our pants and go home? We got to bloody Dresden by some miracle, and we're about to take it back. Kind of late to chicken out, don't you think? It doesn't matter what we do. The lad hanging on the hook next to me didn't want to die. But what could he do to fend off death? What could I do? We're all doomed, but only a few of us are willing to admit it. By this time tomorrow, we'll all be dead. Arabeth's voice drifts away, but then seems to carry from a distance, making its way through the sticky veil of fog that fills your mind. The demon that appeared inside you struggles to free. A little bit more, and its wave of rage will engulf you. Oh man. Arabeth, pull yourself together. Remember Canopus? Despite everything, we won and stopped the catastrophe. Do they really make weaklings like you and to commanders of knightly orders? Another word and you're going in lockup for sowing panic and undermining discipline. I think you still haven't recovered from what you went through in the chapel. Pull yourself together or I'll be forced to suspend you from operation. Pull yourself together or I'll be forced to suspend you. A shadow of something like fear flashes across Arabeth's face. You'd leave me behind? So that I'd have to mourn the dead, my entire order, all my friends? That's worse than dying along, along with everyone else. Dresden will be our deaths. You, Commander, might still have a chance to be saved, but you're leading your people to, to certain ruin. You pathetic little nothing. You were so proud of your strength, and yet you broke so easily. The demonic rage inside you seethes and searches for an exit. It struggles to get out, exhausting, threatening, and convincing at the same time. You also feel strong enough to keep it under control, if you want to. There you have it. A perfect illustration of why the Crusades have made not an inch of progress in a hundred years. A whining upstart commander has been put in charge of a knightly order by an idealistic queen, circumventing all rules of military hierarchy. And now said upstart has crumbled in her first serious trial. Regil chuckles harshly. Absolutely everything in the situation, from the story of Erebeth's rise to the reasons why she lost her reason and moral morale demonstrates how dire matters truly are on our front. These problems can be rectified, of course, but to do that, we will need to drive the, the black sheep from the herd. You give you leave me no choice, Arabeth. I'm suspending you from the operation. Anevia, make sure she gets some rest. Enough. You will join the battle and do your duty. That's an order. Such behavior is unacceptable for an officer and is tantamount to treason. Arrest her, and hold her until she comes to her senses. Oh, I'm so nervous as to what this is gonna be. I love Arabeth. I don't wanna, I don't wanna hurt her. <laughs> ah, shit. This is why, this is why it's probably hard. It's better to do an evil playthrough on the first run, where you haven't learned to love all the characters yet. Ah, shit. Ah, okay. Surrender to your inner demon. Did I just kill her? The flash of rage is blindingly bright, and at the same time, very brief. It fits into a single blow, quick, cruel, immediate. When the fog in your head recedes, you see Arabeth groaning at your feet, and your hand covered in blood. Arabeth slowly stands, feels her face. I actually scarred her! 
and looks for a moment at the blood on her hands. Her usual sense of result resolution return slowly to her eyes. Forgive me, Commander. I had a moment of weakness. It won't happen again. Oh shit, she's she's like Valerie now. Her scar looks a lot cooler though. For a while, no one dares break the silence. Then Anevi exhales loudly and lifts her chin up. Her cheeks are red. Arabeth, are you all right? Commander, what the? Arabeth looks at Anevia. Enough, Nevi. I lost my head and the commander put my mind back where it belongs. Let's drop the subject. Without waiting for a reply, she turns to you. Commander, what exactly did you want to discuss? Windowog, who has kept silent up to now, breaks into a smile of satisfaction. What will this brawl lead to? Will our heads adorn the gates of Dresden tomorrow? Anxiety, impatience, fear, and you, master, standing in the midst of this chaos. A real leader, a rare breed. I want you to know, whatever you decide now, I want to be near. Windwag says the last word with a peculiar pur purring intonation. If we survive this battle, find me. I will pay you the respects of a victor. Respects a victor deserves. Huntress gives you a long, slow blink like a cat. Oh boy. <laughs> what are the Eagle Watch Knights going to do? The Eagle Watch are the most experienced crusaders in the army. They must set an example for the others. We'll spread them across our units so each one has at least a few. I will fight in the group that storms the gates. Reggie, what do you want to suggest? My scouts are able to approach the fortress walls and they, le they learn something unpleasant. The demons have giants who can shoot alchemist fire from catapults. Or sometimes something even worse. They're positioned here. Regil draws crosses on the city map. Luckily, as Anevia said, the city's fortifications are in a sorry state. If we come from this side, through the ruined temples, we can sneak up on the giants and finish them off before they can inflict serious damage on our army. It's a highly risky maneuver. If my unit was injured and exhausted or suffered significant losses, I would consider the risk excessive and never countenance to this plan. Fortunately, thanks to the commander's timely aid, the Hell Knights suffered almost no losses during the encounter with the Gargoyles. We're ready to perform the maneuver, but we'll need cover in case we run into any special demons, like the Nabasu we all remember. Commander, I would like your party to attack the giants with us. The fighters won't like that. Our lads are hoping the, co the commander will personally lead them into battle, not go off with the Hell Knights. Really? They won't like it. I'm getting tired of talking about the outrageous state of discipline in the Crusader army. Shall we see how they like the ra how how they like fire raining down on them from the sky? Nera, what's your plan? Oh, my plan is great. It's a magnificent plan. Here, take a look. Nera spreads another map across the table. I had to dig in the archives to find it, but it was worth it. This is it. The ace that will be that will bring us victory. This is a map of a secret passage that leads to Dresden's Dresden's dungeons. An entire army can't pass through there, but your unit can easily get through and strike the demons from below. They definitely won't be expecting that. Besides, of course we don't know exactly where the Sword of Valor is stored, but I think we should look in the dungeons first. With a little luck, you'll win the battle before the demons even realize it's begun. And Avia, do you still have that barrel of slime we can use to attract the, Vescov the Vescovor swarm? Yes. And they obviously sense it. All this time, there have been small swarms of those damn flies around the camp. All we need to do is spill the barrel and a big swarm will gather quickly. You had quite an idea back in the canyon. We could send a small unit as bait to lure as many demons in from Dresden as possible and then turn the swarm in our favor. We'd rid ourselves of an entire army of enemies in one fell swoop. But it's cruel to use our people like that. They'll be picked up, they'll be picked to the bone along with demons. I think it's a scumbag thing to do. Sometimes fighters have to be sent to their deaths, but feeding them to demon bugs? That's not how it's done. I'd burn the barrel just to be just to be on the safe side. We'll use the mixture in battle. Choose which soldiers will carry the barrel. Remember, they mustn't know they're being sent to their deaths. I think the evil is starting to emerge. As you wish. We attack to tomorrow at dawn. Begin preparations. Where will you be in this battle? I will personally lead the charge. I will go with the Hell Knights and attack the Giants. I will use Nero's map and go through the dungeons. So, 
this is what we did with Barrett because he was a Hell Knight. So obviously he went there option basically every time. I have in the past done Nera's option. I've never personally led the charge. And Manorak seems like the kind of dude who is going to lead the charge. So you've chosen to ignore my suggestion? Very well. I won't object. You lead this army and you bear the responsibilities for the outcome of this operation. If you so command, I can send my people to act on their own and I will attack with your group. Wonderful. That will boost their morale. All right, we attack at dawn. Then, may the good gods help us. Okay, 1200 experience there too. Getting closer, getting closer. Attack at dawn, huh? Um, can we go outside? Can we still go outside? Sounds like campfires. Okay, good. I want to talk to Arabeth. Assuming she's in here. She is not. Because she had loot. Hmm. Is she not out here anymore? I feel really bad for what I did to her. <laughs> uh, maybe she's in the... Uh, the... Um, the hospital camp. Hospital tent. Move out. Also, can I check to see if this trader is doing anything? Yeah, this is the trader in case anybody hasn't caught on. How can I help you? I'll be glad to help in any way I can, but how? That's the question. When the gargoyles attacked the camp, what were you doing with that vial of alchemist fire near my tent? Forgive me, Commander. She looks at the ground. Despite everything, I am still quite unsuited to war. I belong in a library somewhere, not on a battlefield. When those beasts fell from the sky, I panicked. The fire, the screams, the monsters, the chaos. I ran to you because I could see you knew what to do. As for the vial, that was completely stupid. I just wanted to arm myself with something, but I knew fire wouldn't work on demons. How did I grab that alchemist's fire and not something that would actually work? I... I don't know. It's not my first time in the wound, but I still haven't learned how to fight it. Enough lies, Nura. It's time to tell me the truth about what you're doing in this army. You want to know the truth? Her face cringes painfully. Here's the truth. I hate all of you. If I'd been there the day really Vorlish opened a rift to the abyss, I would have gladly handed her the ingredients for the ritual. I put the pheromone-soaked cloth in your pocket. I wanted those hellbugs to eat your smug face off. I was the one who set the tents on fire that night, and I told the gargoyles who to grab. Every day I was in your army, I did all I could to hurt you. Oh, the things I would gladly do to you. And it would be but a thousandth of what you deserve. She hides her face in her hands. When I was eight, I was acute, auctioned off like livestock. Like livestock, they used a stick to train me to obey. Did the paladins of Mendev help me? Of course not. Even when we passed through a Mendevian city, none of those warriors of good lifted a single finger to set me free. Slavers aren't demons after all. Nera looks up and stares at you with eyes red with tears. The first time I came to the wound, I wasn't seeking adventure. My owner dragged me here on a leash. You think the demons bribed me? I was happy to betray him. Without a shadow of a doubt, expecting nothing in return, I poured a sleeping potion into their soup pot, opened the gate, and waited for the demons to come and tear them all to pieces, and me along with them. I didn't care. But the demons saw the real me. They made me a cultist. They offered me a chance for revenge. I'm here for revenge. I only want one thing, for the demons to devour you all. You, your queen, all your heroic knights, and after that, the whole world can burn for all I care. I'm sorry you were so badly treated, but why do you? But why do you want revenge on us? We're your friends. I don't want to hear any excuses for your treason. Save them for your trial. You're right. The Crusaders and demons aren't that different. They're all arrogant morons worshiping their smug idols. Wouldn't you like to help me teach them both a lesson? Hmm. I don't want to sully my hands with you. Get out of here. You're going to pay for your crimes. Here and now. 
You're going to pay for your crimes here and now. There it is, the justice of slavers. You live happily because your victims are never allowed revenge. Are you really surprised I chose the demon side? At least, you, at least they don't claim to be virtuous. I've never claimed to be virtuous. <laughs> Nara, uh, Nara snatches the wand from her belt, waves it quickly, and disappears into a portal. Okay. We'll catch up to you. Yeah, she completely misjudges me. <laughs> I am not virtuous, and I don't claim to be. Uh, she was in the tent when I just slashed... Uh, Arabeth's face. Okay. Well, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. In the next one, we attack Dresden. Until then, hope you all have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you later.